it's now yes sir so guys let's go along um uh, remember how i got this column it's when i added this and this divided by two then i got the mean or the average now this average i divided it by the number of oscillation that's 20 and i got that so i'm coming to square this column this is 1.76 square So it's 3.1, this is 3.01, 3.09. So I have 1.6, you also do the same, it's 1.66, it's 1.66 square. So you have 2.75, it's 2.75. And you have, again, you can go with uh, 1.55. So you have 2.4, that's 2.4. 2.40 so now we've got that now we want to see how we can maybe I'll write these numbers to one decimal place if you like so now I want to draw this if I can write it to let's say 30 to one decimal place so I can write t square second square to one dp if you like so I'll write all of them to one dp so it's easy for me this is 3.1 this is 2.8, if you like, is 2.4. All right, this here. So when and now I want to draw the graph of this. You can use your cal your graph paper now and help me out with this. Yes. Yeah, so on your graph, you try to see how you can, you know, I, I, it's on the the graph paper is 2 dp. Uh, accuracy one decimal place accuracy that's why I'm wrapping up like that so we have there this is I'm plotting a graph of t square and l square and l l now in this in this case it is if I want I can put it in so let me use the variables themselves so I have in meters so I have zero so 0 0.1 let's say 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 and 0 0.8 so i've started from the origin so i've gone that and i came back to the period here the period is three so i can see one let's say two the highest i can get there is three so i can go with that so now this is 0. Point because I'm trying to get these numbers here. I start from the origin to just get my, the shape of my graph. So you can find out this and uh, you use your graph paper. So let's say this is 3.10, it's 0 0.8. So it's 3.10, yeah, use your graph paper. So this is 0 .8, it's 3.1, so 3.1 somewhere there. So 0 0.1, so I'll put it somewhere here. So you must be able to find that on the card, on the graph paper for yourself. 0 0.7 is 2.8. This is 0 0.7 is 2.8. This is 2.8 somewhere there. So 2.8 here. And you have, let's say, uh, 2.4. This is 6, 0 0.6 is 2.4. 2.4. This is 2.5 around here. So 2.4 somewhere here. So 0 0.6. So here. So you can see that I have a straight line through. So you're going to use a straight line through. So if you have to continue with 50, 60, and so on, you get uh, a straight line going through. I just did this for uh, explanation. So let's see how you can find the gradient of this. Let me call this. So I can read this point. This point A as 0 0.6 and 2.4 here. Yeah. And I can read this point as 0 0.8 and 3.1. So I've got a line. So if I can just go there. So what I've done is I have got a line, a slope of A and B. This is 0 0.8 comma 3.1. And I've got here, this is 0 0.6 and 2.4. So this was the first point. I called it x1, y1. This is x2, y2. So now I'm going to find the gradient of this. You know the gradient is y2 minus y1 divided by, so let me use this other part of the blood so that you see here I leave that space for all of that. This is, 
So I'm using here to find the slope. So the slope or the gradient m, as you can see it in math, is y1 is half x2, x1. So now I have 0. Point, I have y2, y1. This is 3.1 minus 2.4 divided by this is 0. 0.8 minus 0. 0.6. So you have, this is, now you can use your own calculator and get the same variable. You use your own calculator. I'm doing it very carefully here so that you follow me as we are moving. You know, we are going together. We are, we are solving this together. So we have 3.1 minus 2.4, 2.4. This is 0 0.7. So you have 0 0.7 and divided by 0 0.8. So 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.2. And this is 0 0.8 minus that. Gives me something like that. So now you are expected to use your calculator also to punch there. We have 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.2. 0 0.2. So we have 3.5. So this is 3.5. So approximately I want to put it to 1. So let's say 4. So I have got 4 as my gradient. This is my gradient, the slope. This is the slope. So now I want to find the acceleration due to gravity. And when I was swinging this, there, there was, uh, the, the gravity was acting on it here. So we want to find the acceleration due to gravity of this studio right now by this simple pendulum. So if you ask to find the acceleration due to gravity by simple pendulum method, this is what you can do. You just do all of this. You can take your simple pendulum to the location and get a couple of values like this. And now you try to find the acceleration due to gravity of a particular location. This is what you do. Follow the math. This is uh, the period we said was related by 2 pi L over G. That's why we, that was the equation. So if I square all sides, I'll have T square and I square here. This is 2 pi. This is L over G all square. So if I square here, I have T square is equal to 4 pi square L over G. All right, so now if I do the math there, I'll have this is 4 pi square all over G L. If I write it properly, then you know it was a straight line. And all equations of straight line, they are in this form, x plus c. And what I did was you, you plotted the L on the x-axis. This is the x-axis. This was x-axis. And you plotted this on the y-axis. This is the y-axis. This is t square. So I, you plotted t square on the y-axis and x on the L on the x-axis. So if you compare these coefficients, you'll find out that the gradient m is 4 pi square all over g. So since I can find the 4 pi out, this I can make g the subject, so I can bring the g is equal to 4 pi square all over the gradient m. So now, remember, we have already found our m over there. So I can find g as equal to 4 into 3.142 square all over 4. So this 4 will vanish with this. So I have g is equal to 3.142 square. So now if you punch that from your calculator, you go along with me, help me out. Let's see how we can uh, verify the acceleration due to gravity of this studio. So you can do that for your school also. You want to find the acceleration due to gravity of your school. It's 3.142, 142 times 3.142 squared. So if you get the math there, so you multiply, you, you try to get a square of that, you get 3.142142. So it is 9.8. So 9 point, so G is equal to 9.8. So we are we are exactly the the, the, the value for G is, is out already. You see that we, we are able to get the acceleration due to gravity of this room by the simple pendulum method. So this is one way you can find the acceleration due to gravity. The, this, the unit there tells you that uh, the meter per second, second, per second square it means it's the same as meter per second per second. So if, if I have a high altitude like that, I drop an object. This, this figure means, it means that if I drop an object like this ball was going there and dropping to a, to a, to a 
to a particular height. If I drop this object down, then there is tendency that uh, if I leave it at zero seconds, uh, it will the speed will be 9.8 meters per second in the first second, and in the second set of seconds, that's another second, you are going to have the 9.8 added to another 9.8. That's how we have a 9.8 meter per second per second. That's the meaning per second square. Because if, if I drop it from that height up to uh, uh, from zero seconds, um, it, the speed will be 9.8 meters per second. And another second, that's 9.8 will double. That's the meaning of the meter per second per second. So tell you that the acceleration due to gravity of the studio is 9.8. So you can use the same method to find the acceleration due to gravity of your school. So now your laboratory. So check, uh, we coming to now see whether the other factors will affect this. Now we've seen how the length is as the length was uh, reducing, the time also was reducing, you saw that. So it is me that the period is directly proportional to the length. So you are able to figure out, and now we want to see the other factors, whether the amplitude will change. So I'm coming to adjust this, to see whether the amplitude is a factor. Uh, I've already explained that to you. So we, we go back to our normal, yep, so I'll just, I'll just try to make now a distinction between the, this was the 8 centimeter, yes, the 80 centimeter. Now the 80 centimeter, I marked it somewhere here, yes, that's 80 centimeter. Yes, so now with this 80 centimeter, we want to see um, whether if I now displace it at, this is 80. Just trying to co to verify a couple of things. This is yes, it is 80 centimeter still, 80 centimeter. Right. So now we are coming to verify whether the amplitude is a factor here. Whether the amplitude is a factor. So I am going to displace it at an, at a displacement that is uh, uh, we have done for uh, the 13 centimeter. I am going to displace it. At, an, at a displacement of 10. So we see the difference between the two. So let me just draw the diagram so you see what I'm saying. This is the ball. We, we, it was in this equilibrium position. We, we displace it there at 13 centimeter. Now I want to displace it here. So we are around 10 centimeter. I want to see whether the amplitude here, and the amplitude there, this amplitude and this, I want to see whether it's a factor of this. So I'm trying to, so, so I've done for uh, 13, so I just got to go 82 here to 10. This is 10, it's already 10 here. This was 13, so I'm now going to do it for 10. So that I see whether the, the period will change, that's what I'm saying. So this is 10, so I'll bring it here. So, so um, this is 80, so just a small displacement that is now 10 centimeter. This was this was 13. Now this is 10. So there I leave it to oscillate. Now I start I start my time. So when I start here, I start start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So, see, same time, it's the same time, they are 35, it's 35. 35 point something. So the amplitude was, when the amplitude was uh, 13 centimeter, I got 35. When the amplitude is 10, it's still 35. So it tells you it doesn't matter. For as much as I did not exceed that one sixth displacement, all within this displacement, it has nothing to do with the period. The, the amplitude is independent of the period. That's what we have just proven here. So now I want to prove another factor here about the masses. So I'm bringing a smaller, I'm bringing a smaller pendulum here, which is also the same, <coughs> sorry, now we have the same pendulum. Now this is 
the same length is still 80 centimeter, 80 centimeter, but now a smaller pendulum. Uh, I want to see if I displace it again. I'm going to displace this one too uh, at uh, 13 centimeter away from that. So this is 13 centimeter. It's just right here. So the same. What we want to see whether. Okay, so what I will do is let me just place this one here for, so that we will not have disturbance from the other pendulum. Okay, so now it is displaced. I'm going to displace it the same 13 centimeters somewhere there. Now this is a smaller one. We want to know whether the masses, they are not the same. This mass is not the same as this. It's different. So we want to see whether the mass is also a factor on the period. I've just proven the displacement is not a factor. Now I want to check whether the, the mass is there. So this is the 13 centimeter. This is 80. And now the displacement is 13 centimeter from that point. That's what we did from the equilibrium position. That's 13 centimeter. Now I'm coming to displace it and allow it to, to oscillate. Same. So I set the time again. So I start all over. So this is a smaller pendulum. So the masses are not the same. We want to verify whether the masses, the masses, difference in the mass is a factor. So I start from here. When it starts, it starts. This is one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20. So here, yeah, same, same time. It's 35. So it tells you it, it, it's not a factor here. Whether the mass is big or small, it is not going to change the period. This is T35, just like the first one is T35. So it is the same as the first one. So it means the masses does not affect the period. So let's see. If I bring a bigger mass, again, I want to bring another mass here that is a little bit a different mass for the same stuff. I want to see whether this uh, lamp can also do the same. Yep, so we have two. So I, I suspend this for the time being. So I get it over there. Now I got I to gotta do the same displacement for this. It is still 13 centimeters, so here. So I'm displacing, this is 80, I've measured it earlier on. This is 13 centimeters, so here, here. Yes, this is 13 centimeters here. So now it's, it's 80. So roughly I'm taking this point as the center of gravity of this lamp, or this bulb, so we see whether it's got also, the masses are not the same, so let's see what will happen. So it is the same, the same 13, this 13 centimeter from here. That is it here. So I'll displace it at the same level. It's one sixth of this 80 centimeter. Is that 13 centimeter? So I'm displacing it at 13 centimeter. Then I allow my time to go. So this is here, just 13 centimeter. I allow it to swing. So I'm going to set the same time. Start again. So when it start here, when it come here, I start. Start. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. See, so 35. So it doesn't change. The mass is, is they are independent. The same 35. So 35 point something, but just within the same 35 because of the uh, my reaction time. So the time does not change for as much as the, the if, even if I change the masses, bigger the mass, whatever, it's going to affect the period. So that was an intuition for you. Was able to take that out. So it is not a factor. So the mass of the pe the bulb is not a factor here. It does not affect the period. It is the length and the gravity that affect the period. So you must be able to understand that. Now we have verified all the laws and now we can 
put the two together, we can now try to get uh, another example on this, which is the bifilia suspension. And the bifilia suspension, I'm going to just show you, and you try to demonstrate that in your own laboratory. So you have seen the factors already, that the period is independent of upon the amplitude of the displacement, the maximum displacement, that's the amplitude. It's independent of the amplitude. It's also independent of the mass, but dependent greatly on the uh, length there. And now you see that if I, the, the question I want you to answer is that if I take this pendulum now to a place where there is no gravity, what will happen to the period? That's, that's, that's a question for you uh, uh, to try to think about it. What will happen? Remember the formula. If, if I now take this pendulum to a place where there is no gravity, what will happen to the period? So you try to answer that question. So now to move, I'm moving away a little bit from this. So I have another type of simple uh, oscillatory motion. We have a simple harmonic motion demonstrated with a simple pendulum. Now I want to demonstrate the next one here, which is the bifidial suspension. That's what we can do. Then uh, we see what, what comes out of it. So I have, I have the first two. I can just displace this for you. So you get there. Now I gotta do something like this. And I have uh, this mask there. And I can do, I can undo this. Since I'm done with it, I can undo this. Here. Can undo all of this. Then I can undo this too. Now I wanna do another example on another oscillatory motion. So this gives us an idea of how it looks like. Yep, so this is it. Now we want to look at the bifilia suspension by means two. So the other experiment is bifilia suspension, which is also demonstrating oscillating motion. But I just give you an example of the simple harmonic motion. One was simple pendulum. Now I'm trying to do a bifilia suspension so that you can see uh, also how it is oscillating with time. So by is two, so you know that. So this is, I'm also using a cork with a string. So later we can adjust the position of the string. Let's say some here there. Uh, I start with, yes, we start from there. So it gives you an idea that uh, the, another set of simple pendulum, another, oscillating motion is the bifidia suspension. So we can see how it looks like. So I will just put this through. There we go. Yes, so there we go. Yes, so now we have uh, the bifilia suspension. Yes, and we also have, yes, this was our suspension. So we have, we made a loop, and that loop was at 90 centimeters somewhere here. And this other one too, somewhere around 10 centimeter. So this is 10 here. And now I got to just give you some space so that you can see what I'm about to do here. This is a bifilia suspension. For a bifilia suspension, yes, it's, it's, it is dealing with two 
let me give her yes need a space a little bit there so here this is now the 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 scale part of the, the meter rule is uh, is lifted up so that you actually see so I can yes I'm trying to give you space so that you see the, the string vertically so I can adjust this inside a little bit right there so I have a bit of space can adjust this two inside yep so uh, my strings the length of my strings this is 80 centimeter this one too is 80 yeah this is a little bit more than 80 so I'll put it right here So I hope you follow what I'm saying. Just see the demonstration and you follow up. You can do this in your laboratory too. Yes, yeah, this 80. This is 80. And now we've done the bifilia suspension. So I just draw it for you. This is now this rule is here. So that's a hitch this H and let's say this is a 10 centimeter permanent and this is 90 centimeter so now it's possible that you be having you the, the height to be varying in this case and you find the oscillation the time for complete oscillation time for another oscillation and you you vary the H Let's see, like now I've started with 80, so you can vary it if you have to take in that, that is 0 0.8, let's say 0 0.7, 0 0.6, or 70 centimeter, 60 centimeter, as the case may be, we want to put it in meters. So now, now I've given you the, the simple pendulum as an example. Another example of uh, simple harmonic motion was the bifilia suspension. That's the bifilia. Bi means two, philia is strings. So these two strings are uh, is this the root uh, the meter roll is being suspended by these two strings. So now this is the diagram and that's the setup. Now you are coming to give it a small displacement and you count you displace it clockwise or anti-clockwise. Let's displace it this way or this way. You can displace it clockwise or anti-clockwise and it will it, it now set your time so we can start so I give it a small displacement so I just that is just small displacement then I release it when I give it a small displacement I allow it to oscillate you see it be oscillating like that so it will oscillate now so this because of the, the position of this we we want to see how you, you can do it for 10 complete oscillation so in your classroom you try as much to see how it is you know what is is conducting a cycle there so it's one complete oscillation as it's moving away so now the you you just give it a small twist right and allow it to go this is one this is two this is three four five six so when, when you displace it you you allow it to swing for some time and we set your time for 10 complete oscillation so see let's say we want to we want to start i want to start as it is here so one two three four five six seven eight nine then this time 10 complete oscillation so supposed to be 10 all right so i missed the timing so now you you can see that uh that, let's do it again let's do it again so you see how i'm doing it for 10 complete oscillations so we go i'm allowing it to i twist it i just twist it a little bit i allow it clockwise to go so it's that is start one two three four 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now this one is you see because the oscillation is ten complete oscillation they gave you somewhere around fourteen so fourteen seconds. So now for that height you say it's fourteen seconds. Fourteen seconds. So you get 14 seconds, point zero zero seconds. You do it again. You want to do it again. You want to displace it a little bit and allow it to oscillate. This is it. Allow it to oscillate. So this is my allowance start here. I start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and ten so see same 14 14 points or uh, 13.9 this is 13.9 so it's approximately closer this is 13.9 right so now let's see if i change the length what happened to this period so i change the length to 70 so we now see so 70 change Right, come back here. This is 70. Adjust it such that I have 70 somewhere there. Then, yes, this is 70. So, I got to do a verification. This is T10 and 90. So, I do verification. This is, yes, approximately 70. Right, so what I did was to let me verify it properly. This is uh, I want to put it at this is seventy. This is eighty. Now let me put it at seventy. Yes, so I've done for eighty. Let me put it for at seventy. So I bring it right here. This is seventy. Seventy. Bring it right up. Little bit seventy. It's just a little. Yes, there. This is yeah, this 70. Exactly 13. So this is 13. So it's 13 point zero zero. So you can see what is happening to the time. So let's see. I do it for a second time. So I displace it. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, it is thirteen. There again, thirteen exactly. So the time is coming down as I'm moving. So you can see that as I'm reducing the length, the time is also coming down, which is in which is corresponding to what we did. So this is a bifurcated suspension.